Hello everyone, my name is Neeraj and welcome to the first episode of Ruby Motion. Before I get started, I just want to mention that I am not a Ruby Motion expert. In fact, I am a Ruby Motion beginner. I am primarily a Rails programmer and I'm trying to learn Ruby Motion. This is my journey into learning Ruby Motion and you are welcome to join me in this journey and let's learn together. Let's see the application that we are going to build today and that is this application. This is nothing else but a simple list of programming languages randomly chosen by me. Now let's look at the code. Here we are looking at app delegate and the line that we want to pay attention to is line number five where we are creating a languages controller instance and then we assign that controller to the root view controller and that's how the application comes to life now let's look at languages controller so the first thing in the languages controller i see is that the class is being subclassed or uh, is a is a subclass of ui view controller now coming from the rails world this uh, confused me a little bit. See, in the Rails world, we have a controller, and then the controller uh, gives the model or an instance of the object to the view. But the UI view controller itself, the controller itself has an instance of the view, and that is we can see here self dot view. So when an instance of UI view controller is created, then it itself has a view. However, by default, this view is a blank canvas. There is nothing in that view. Now, if you want something to appear on this view, then we need to add our content as a sub view to this view. So once again, the controller has and the controller instance has a view which is shown to the screen and by default that view is empty and it is our job to attach whatever we want to be displayed on the view as a sub view to this view now let's uh, start with the code the first method is view did load so when the controller instance is created then it has to go through its own life cycle it does a bunch of stuff and finally it calls this method view did load what it means is that view has just been loaded and now is the time for our application to attach something to this view so that some content is shown on the view so this is our opportunity to attach something. So we will do a bunch of stuff here, but the main thing is attach something to the view so that that content gets displayed on the view. So the first method is super. That's to take care of the lifecycle stuff. Then we set the title of the view, which is programming languages in this case. And then we create an instance of UI table view. Suffice to say that UI table view is a view which represents tabular data. And then we attach the table to the view as a sub view. Makes sense, we just uh, now discussed that. But at this time, the table is empty. Table doesn't have any data. In order to provide data to table, we have a method called table.datasource. And in this case, we are saying that this controller itself is going to be the source for the data. Okay. And we have table. Table is nothing else but an array of programming languages list, which is randomly chosen a few programming languages. Now, in order for any object to be 
a source for data to the table, it has to implement a few methods. These two are the very basic methods. Here is once again something which coming from Rails world, I found a bit confusing. See, both the methods have the same name, table view, table view. So in the Rails world, the second method would have overwritten the first method, but that's not how things work in Ruby Motion. Here we have a table view and then we have a bunch of arguments. And since the arguments are different, these are two uh, distinct methods. Now let's look at the first one. Uh, we have um, an argument named number of rows in section. We will discuss about section in future episodes, but for now we can assume that uh, it is similar to something like number of rows in this table. So in this table, the number of rows is nothing else but data.count. That's the number of programming languages. And the second method is, uh, as the name suggests, cell for row at index path. And we uh, and the input is index path. Index path dot row gives us the row number. So let's say that row number is three. We want to get the programming languages, programming language name for the third uh, row in the table. That's very easy from the data, which is an array, we get the third programming language and we assign that to cell.textlabel.text and 